Hello and welcome to the Photo Eye Guide to Digital SLR Photography. On this DVD I will be showing you some of the features and functions found on most of today's digital single lens reflex cameras. I'll also be giving you some practical advice on how to use these in real picture taking situations. Understanding every aspect of your digital SLR will ensure that you get the very best results from your camera. The creative process doesn't just end at the shooting stage. There are plenty of things you can do to improve a picture using a computer and image editing software such as Photoshop, PaintShop Pro, Lightroom etc. I will be demonstrating some useful image editing techniques that you can incorporate into your own pictures. Knowing your camera inside out plus an understanding of exposure, lenses, aperture, white balance, focus and composition should all be second nature. Once you've mastered these you'll have complete artistic freedom to capture stunning pictures. The one common denominator for any artistic endeavour is that in order to achieve the highest possible quality you must first master the basic techniques associated with the art. So what makes a good picture? First and foremost it has to be subject matter. The picture has to have a point of interest to make you want to stop and look at it. The key elements in any picture are subject, composition, focus and exposure. If any one of these elements isn't right then the impact of your picture may be lost. Of course, as with any creative work, rules can be broken as long as it adds or improves to the final result. In this chapter I'll be looking at exposure and asking what is a correct exposure, what is available to measure exposure and how to correct a poorly exposed picture. Before we get practical let me explain how a camera works out the exposure. When you point your camera at a scene the exposure meter averages out the colours into light values. It doesn't see colours, it only reads the brightness value for a colour. All the colours are blended together to produce a grey tone. An average exposure value is assigned to that scene. The clever bit is knowing how to interpret the reading so you can capture the mood of what you see and not just an overall picture based on a mid-tone reading. Whether you read a book by candlelight, a desk light or sitting in a sunny garden, the paper will always look white. But in reality each of these light sources has a different colour, known as colour temperature. Colour temperature is commonly measured in degrees Kelvin and this scale is provided on some of the more advanced and professional cameras. Kelvin is a scale of colour temperatures ranging from 2000 which is candlelight through to 10,000 which is a clear blue sky. Adjusting the Kelvin scale value will give you full control on how warm or cool you want your pictures to look. Generally daylight has a value between 5600 to 6500 degrees Kelvin. Colour temperatures can vary during the course of a day from a cool light through to a warm glow of an evening sunset. Of course you may not want to colour correct a wonderful sunset. After all the beauty of colour photography is also capturing the mood using the ambient colours of the day. Tungsten or artificial lighting normally has a value of 3200 Kelvin but this can also vary depending on how old the light bulbs are or if there's a drop in electricity voltage. The normal tungsten colour could now be anything from 2500 to 4000 Kelvin. You are now dealing with values that are not available on the preset white balance settings. The easiest way to achieve absolute correct colours is to create a custom white balance. 
Simply use a clean white sheet of plain A4 paper, not glossy photo paper, as this may affect the reading. Place it in the scene and select a custom white balance setting on the camera. Digital SLR cameras have a very sophisticated processor chip on board. When you press the shutter to take the picture, the camera works out the focus, exposure, white balance, applies sharpening and finally compresses the image. The last step enables the camera to fit more pictures onto a memory card. If you just want your creativity to flow, then you can let the camera work out all the technicalities for you by selecting the fully auto or program modes. The correct shutter speed and aperture will be set for you. All you need to do is point the camera at your subject, compose the shot and finally press the shutter release. This automated process works very well in most picture taking situations. Digital SLR cameras can produce great results with the minimum amount of technical knowledge from any user. However, the more advanced enthusiast and professional photographer will want full control on every aspect in the picture taking process. And this means disabling all the automated features and working with the raw data. In this chapter, I'll be showing you the advantages of capturing images using the camera's raw mode. Before I go into greater detail with the raw file format, I must point out that each camera manufacturer has its own raw file format. Canon uses CR2, Nikon uses NEF, Olympus uses ORF, etc. This tutorial is going to be looking at advanced techniques with black and white. Let's open a new image. I go to File, Open, and we'll select a raw file. And we'll click Open. Now this opens the Camera Raw interface. I'm going to show you a quick way to do an advanced black and white manipulation. I rather like this red bus, so let's isolate the red bus. We'll go to the Hue, Saturation, and Luminance there. And I'm going to actually select the saturation. And now I'm going to select the brush on the top here, which is the targeted adjustment. This means I can click on the blue sky and just drag my mouse down. And we've got rid of all the color there. I'm going to do exactly the same on the House of the Parliament. Click on the House of the Parliament and drag the colors down. And we can do this in a couple of places just in case there's some yellow shades left. And there we are. It's very, very simple. But now I also want to increase the blueness of the sky or give myself a, a little bit of a, a deeper tone. Mm -hmm.